Le Shana Tova. My name is Dan Jones, and I humbly serve as the president of our congregation. Wow. What a difference a year makes. A year ago at this time, we came together as a large gathering of our community for the first time in almost 18 months. We were filled with hope and optimism, but there was also trepidation, anxiety, and fear. While we're still on our journey to normalcy, if that's possible, as I look out at our gathering today, both in person and online, I'm filled with gratitude, appreciation, and a strong desire to see we, we, what we can accomplish as a united community. And friends, if you remember this from last year, in the time-honored tradition of synagogue presidential remarks, you can sort of take this like a seventh inning stretch if you want. You've got about 10 minutes to take a bathroom break, but you'll want to be back because the shofar part of the service is right after. And you know, Rosh Hashanah, shofar blowing, it's kind of a thing. <laughs> when I was a sophomore at Booker T. Washington, go Hornets, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I took an English class called Search for Identity. My fabulous teacher, Mrs. Susan Gronberg, introduced our class to some amazing books and plays such as The Catcher in the Rye, Death of a Salesman, The Heart is a Lonely Hunter, The Loneliness of a Long Distance Runner, and My Name is Asher Lev. Through these texts, Mrs. Gronberg encouraged us to think about our place in the world and who we might become and aspire to be. It was the first time I remember someone encouraging me to start developing ideas on what my adult sense of self might be like. In my opinion, this search for identity is a lifelong process, not only for an individual, but also for communities and organizations. Our world is in a constant state of change and flux, and thus our place in it, in it needs some form of deliberate evolution in order to keep ourselves connected, relevant, and involved. About a year ago, we began our work in developing new strategic thinking for Congregation Beth Israel. As a key fundamental building of our strategic planning efforts, we conducted our own search for identity to try and get to the heart of how we see ourselves as a community and where we see ourselves going in the future. We are a large congregation. In fact, at present time, we are the 10th largest Reformed Jewish congregation in the United States. It was important to the strategic design team that we gather as much information from our community as we would be able to get. Through interviews, listening sessions, and surveys, we endeavored, we endeavored to give as many in our community who wanted to the opportunity to express themselves and help us understand the identity of Beth Israel. What did we learn about ourselves? We are strong, we are stable, and we are hopeful and thoughtful for and about the future. We are concerned and paying attention to the future of Reform Judaism in San Diego, in the United States, and in the world at large. We aspire to be accepting and inclusive of all that want to come and worship with us. We aspire to have better synergy between our staff and our volunteers. We aspire to continue and grow our already strong commitment to music as a sacred and uplifting part of our religious services and programming. We aspire to be innovative, not only in our uses of technology, but also in our thinking of how we do things. We aspire to achieve financial independence and stability, not only in this moment, but for future generations to come. We aspire to clearly communicate, not only to each other, but with our greater community. We aspire to further our culture and journey of lifelong learning for every age of our membership. We aspire to do more and to do more better. We aspire, we aspire, we aspire. And what do we do with these aspirations? The input that we received served as the building blocks that the strategic design team used to craft the foundation of our new efforts 
are seven strategic commitments. We chose the word commitment as we felt it encapsulates the partnership and responsibility we must take with strategic endeavors in order to be accountable to seeing them through to their successful conclusion. These commitments are a reflection of the way we see ourselves and our hopes for the future. Number one, a commitment to inclusion and belonging. Number two, a commitment to service. Number three, a commitment to music. Number four, a commitment to innovation. Number five, a commitment to financial stability. Number six, a commitment to robust communication. And number seven, a commitment to lifelong learning. On the surface, these seven commitments may seem simple and perhaps obvious, but often the truth when uncovered, can seem that way. The chorus of voices heard and studied by the strategic design team were not disparate. The songs they sang may have had different words, but the refrains and chorus had similar themes. The work of distilling these themes was a massive effort for our strategic design team and our consultants, and I will be forever grateful for the monumental work that went into the review of the enormous amount of data that was collected. Were we able to include everything we heard from our community? No. That wouldn't be possible to take on and still come up with a plan that was truly actionable and executable. But it is the firm belief of the strategic design team that the best of efforts have been made to capture the overwhelming themes and desires of our Beth Israel community. Now, what do we do with these commitments? These commitments give us a lens to look through and guiding principles to shape our future actions and endeavors. The execution of this work may differ between the commitments. Some will be more staff-driven, some more community-driven, and some will be shepherded by a combination of both staff and community. The commonality between all seven will be oversight. Each one will have an oversight team consisting of a board member, a non-board member, and a staff member. This trio will guide and lead the efforts of continuous improvement that are driven from their area of strategic commitment. New committees or existing committees charged with using the commitments to rejuvenate their work and task forces will be born out of this work. New ideas and modalities will be explored and the aspirational journey towards the future of Beth Israel will be underway. I want to be clear on two things. Number one, the strategic commitments are not in themselves a new mission statement for Beth Israel, though they will help and inform and guide a redevelopment of our mission statement in the coming months. And number two, some may ask, where is Judaism in these strategic commitments? This process was meant to give us a focus on strategy and strategic concentrations. Our Judaism and its values and tenets inform our interest and our stake in our seven strategic commitments. Well, Dan, that's a whole lot of words. And it is 1,133 to be exact. <laughs> You're probably thinking to yourself at this point, where do we come into this? You, my friends, are the most important part. These are your commitments. These are the things that you identified as the most important focal points for the continuation, betterment, and growth of our Beth Israel community. In the annual review that was made available to you, to, to, to you today on some tables outside, it lists our seven strategic commitments. Read them. Consider them. Pick one or more that resonates with you and think about getting involved with that effort. Approach myself, Executive Director Leslie Mills, our clergy, our staff, and let us connect you with our endeavors as we begin to move forward in the next few months. The execution of a strategic vision cannot only be in the hands of even the most dedicated and hardworking committees. It is the work of an entire community that is aligned in its purpose. We asked you, Beth Israel, 
to help us search for identity. Who are we, and who do we want to be? You answered, we listened, and now we go to work. But now, the announcements. <laughs> it's my pleasure to introduce Andrew Garman and Herb Hafter, who serve on your board of directors, joining me on the BEMA this morning. A thank you to our Zimraya, Corral, and friends, and welcome back to the BEMA for High Holy Days. I don't know if you noticed, but our Zimraya Chorale, our adult choir, are gracious enough that when we have the teen and youth choir, they cede the bima to them and come down. I'm guessing that's something to do with the parents possibly wanting to see the faces. But now your parents have an opportunity to see your faces. <laughs> to our instrumentalists, Buddy Voigt, Corey Briggs, Andy Mayer, David Weinstein, Alana Hirschfeld, and Jeff Myers. Also, thanks to our soloists, Heidi Gandwerk and Danny Myers, and our conductor, Brian Lustig. Thank you all for creating such beauty in our worship this morning. We also especially thank Iris and Matthew Strauss as sponsors of our High Holy Day music, and Dr. Lisa Braun Glazer and Jeff Glazer for generously underwriting the purchase of our High Holy Day prayer books. Throughout our High Holy Day observances this year, parking will continue to be available in the gateway parking structure. There are two entrances on Town Center Drive. Please park on the lowest two levels of the garage if you can. You may need to pull a parking ticket and validate it prior to leaving. Parking validation machines will be available at several locations as you exit services. If you didn't pull a ticket today and the barrier was up, the barriers should be up as you're leaving today, and we'll have staff outside in case there are any challenges. For those with disabled parking placards, there is limited parking in Beth Israel's main parking lot off of Golden Haven Drive. We do have overflow parking available at UTC Mall, but mall parking rates apply. The first two hours are free. Beth Israel does not validate for UTC Mall parking. Our Rosh Hashanah offerings continue today with our Young Families Rosh Hashanah service at 4 p.m. And to finish up day one of Rosh Hashanah, please consider joining us for Tashli at La Jolla Shores at 6 p.m. Second day Rosh Hashanah morning services will begin at 9 Tomorrow on Tuesday, not the time I said yesterday, that was wrong, 9 o'clock tomorrow. Please check your ticket packets on our website for all service times and information. For questions throughout the day, please stop by our solutions table in the courtyard. And finally, did you know that the Jewish Federation of San Diego is organizing a trip to Israel in May of 2023? Well, they are, and they would love for you to learn more about it. We at Beth Israel plan to have a strong presence on this trip, and we will even have our own Beth Israel bus for local transportation in Israel. You can find inform more information in the lobby of our sanctuary, as well as online at jewishinsandiego.org. On behalf of your board of directors, the talented and incredible staff of Beth Israel, and my family, Stacy and Alex, Lashana Tovah Tikatevu, we hope it will be a healthy and sweet new year for you and your family.